So I seen this video um, and, and I say, oh no, he didn't post this video. So you have this, you know, boar, uh, those of you that watch us from South Africa, you know who the boars are. Those are uh, the uh, Mzungu South Africans. Um, you know, and, and a lot of them, you know, that walk around there have, you know, some, some nerve in a lot of ways. Um, but I want you to watch this video and, and I want you to listen to what this guy has to say. And let's just have a conversation, right? I mean, because I, I actually like his video and what he's saying. Let's roll that clip. I'm going to say this once and once only. I am a white African born in South Africa. I speak three languages fluently, Afrikaans, an African dialect, English, and Dutch. I do understand some African native languages, and I can do better. I am more African than Beyonce, Eddie Murphy, President Obama. They share African ancestry. They were not born here especially Obama. In fact, it is very racist for people who say white people who've been born in Africa are not African. Okay? And by virtue of you saying that, you just show your own prejudice. African Americans who claim they are African are not. It's merely a virtue signaling so they can claim victimhood there over in America. Now, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that's not the first time or the first person of his persuasion, they have said something like that even to me. I'm one time I was on Facebook. Um, I had posted a story, um, maybe about a year or two ago. No, no, it was definitely two years ago. Well, you had a Mzungu go inside of a, um, bathroom and violate a child and they had, you know, caught him and everything. And so I was saying that, you know, at when Nelson Mandela and them took over, the greatest mistake they ever made was allow them to stay there. It should have brokered a deal with the Netherlands to take their people back because I know the white supremacists cannot live in peace uh, with, with black folks like that. They just don't want to. They plotting it every day in South Africa, how they can try to get power back and put the apartheid system back in. Even now in South Africa, uh, the white supremacists uh, still own a lot of, you know, land and, and, and black folks are dealing with issues and problems, even though black folks, or the majority of the population. Now, I know I have, you know, a few people who talk to me from South Africa say, hey, no, and they get out of pocket, you know, they, they gonna get touched up out here. And, and I'm not saying I don't believe that, but let's talk about this. So I had this um, Mzungu female told me the exact same thing this man said in this video, that she was more African than me. And I'm looking at this, this, this lily white woman tell me that she's more African than me. And so I asked her, I said, I was curious. I never heard that before. I say, well, how, how are you more African than me? Please explain that because I was born here. So what does that mean? I said, you are a European. You're not an African period. Now you heard this genius here said that he is more African than Eddie Murphy and Beyonce. And, um, and he also said that, you know, someone that looked like me, a African American, black American that I am not African at all. Okay, sir. Cool. I'm not African. Now, of course you're going to have some silly Negroes. that are going to try to rationalize. Oh, listen, I understand that culturally I am black American culturally. I'm happy to be black American culturally because that I look at that as part of the ethnic groups within a diaspora. Our, our ethnic group is just as important as someone's, you know, ethnic group that could be from South Africa or Nigeria or, you know, Ghana or et cetera. Right. I believe we all important and we all bring great things to the table. We do. Right. But let's just talk about a few things. Number one, let's that we can do a nature test with me and you guy. What I, we could do, I can even do it. Let's listen. I can come out there, go to the beach and look, we'll make sure before we go to the beach, we'll take a shower, you know, and, and, and we'll put on deodorant though, of course, but we're not going to put on no lotion, no nothing for that day. I'll be ashy for a day and we will, we will stay at the beach all day and just bake in the sun and, and all day we will, we will pick the hottest day that we can in South Africa to do this. And I want to see after all that sun that we'll take in, which one of us would just soak up the sun 
and get darker and which one of us could get second and third degree burns. I just want to know, and, and, and maybe whatever one that do that, maybe that person that gets darker and just soaks up all that great vitamin D from the sun, a child of the sun, that person will be proven as an African. You want to go science. Let's go science. We could take ancestry, uh, not even ancestry. Let's not throw that one out. Let's take African ancestry. That's what I meant to say. African ancestry test. Let me and you take it. And then you can swab your uh, master clan. I do mine. And let's see what comes back. Let's see if you are a African. Cause science not going to back that up. Even if you took ancestry DNA, their test is not going. We all know what's going to come back. Why are you so delusional and still trying to colonize that land? See, Robert Mugabe, the great Robert Mugabe, he had it right. He ran the rights of white supremacists out of there. He changed the name from Rhodesia to Zimbabwe because our brother knew better. He knew that the white supremacists will come back. Now you may say, well, look at Zimbabwe today. Never let them tell you that because Zimbabwe was fine after that. Zimbabwe was fine for a long time. Even, you know, Robert Mugabe, um, we used to go up there with the queen all the time, right? highly educated brother, the United States and the European union conspired against Zimbabwe to put sanctions on that small African country to where they can't get loans. They can't do certain kind of business because this is the way it works. When they put sanctions on them, they say, if you try to do business or give loans to Zimbabwe, we'll put sanctions on you too. So basically they cut them off from the financial system and, and, and strain them and, and having it crash in their economy and just basically starving them out. That isn't right. But you're supposed to be so-called a Christian nation. And that's what you go do for a people that got themselves free from white supremacist, uh, uh, colonization and terrorism. How dare they get themselves free. So let's go ahead on and try to break the will of the people in Zimbabwe. They're still suffering to this day. But still, no matter what, even if they suffered, Mugabe had it right. Nelson Mandela, great man as he was, the bro, Nelson Mandela was a head buster when he was young, that's for sure. But the greatest mistake Mandela made was not brokering the deal with the Netherlands to take their people back. That's his bottom line. The second mistake he did he made, he didn't transfer that wealth from them to the indigenous people of that country. That's the second mistake that he made. I understand that what he was trying to do, I get it, but just in hindsight now, that was just one of some of the greatest mistakes that our brother made at that time period. But you have them that, that in South Africa that feel like they're, they, they're more African. The question I have is why are you bringing us up? Like we didn't even mention in that. We're not even having that debate with you, but you're bringing up black Americans. No, I know what it is. You're threatened by us. You're threatened by us. Cause you know, if we come to South Africa in large numbers, you're all that little, them little stunts that you pull over there, you know, that's going to be a wrap because one group of Africans that relate the most to black Americans is South Africans. Because you know what? We share the same exact history with you. The same exact history of white supremacist terrorism. We share it. We call it Jim Crow and slavery and all that. You had colonization and apartheid, same thing. Different continent, same devil. So we understand that. And we, we get along very well, South Africans and black Americans. And you don't want that. You want to cause dissension. See brothers and sisters, sometimes even certain accounts that come there trolling and acting like they're Africans. A lot of times I found out some of them are not even Africans. They even have some of them that straight Mazungus that's coming in conversations with black Americans, uh, Caribbeans, Africans, and trying to cause dissent because they don't want us unifying at all because they are so threatened by the unification of black folks worldwide. They, they need black folks to live. I'm going to read that again. They need black folks. They cannot, they have never lived a day without black folk. And the day they were living without black folk, look at how Europe was. That was a poop hole, not to say the other word, if you know, uh, European history. And so the Moors came there and start civilizing them and start teaching them things that they act like they didn't learn from the Moors and what brothers and sisters taught them on the continent. But my thing is maybe you should be humble. Maybe you should be humble a little bit.
Maybe you should thank the brothers and sisters for not rounding you up and kicking you out. Maybe you should thank them for that instead of walking around here like, like you so much better. They got stories that we have covered in the past. You, y'all want these segregated schools and segregated towns in a country that's you're not the majority. What I look like going to a European country and demanding a certain segregation and don't want the indigenous people of that European country around like that. Like if I don't, if I hate them like that, I don't need to be there. It's just that, it's just that simple. But brothers and sisters in South Africa, you know, I, I've seen some responses that even some of y'all made to this. And it, this is not to be logical, but you know, I just want to point out that you do have those over there in South Africa. And to, to answer this guy, we're coming. You're not stopping us from coming at all. You're, you're not stopping it because this, I mean, y'all are easy to deal with. We know, we know y'all like the back of our hand, right? But <laughs> I just thought this video was interesting. This guy had the nerve and he acted like he, he knows so much about, about the African continent. I mean, well, shoot. I mean, you know, talking about you speaking languages. Well, anybody can learn a language. No matter where you come from, you can learn a language. That doesn't impress nobody. You're not African at all. You're not. DNA says you're not African. Bloodline says you're not African. You're not. My ancestor was just taken from our original homeland on the African continent and brought here. I'm not one of those black folks that try to claim everything America. No, I'm not because I know exactly what my lineage go back to. Um, so no, dude, you're not African. You're not. You can never be African. European? Yes. What's wrong with the Netherlands? Just, just, I just want to ask that question. What's wrong with the Netherlands? But I know what's wrong with it because I was written um, the email a while ago by a woman from the Netherlands. And she explained to me when I, when she kept hearing me say that y'all need to go back to your homeland, she said that we don't want them. That's why we don't advocate for them to come back. So that's why you stuck in South Africa because they don't even want you. They look at you as outcasts in the Netherlands. So maybe you should have some act right and humble yourself because what if the brothers and sisters in South Africa kick you out? Then where you going to go? But leave me a comment. Let me think about this, this particular, you know, individual um, that they say he's more African than you and me, brother and sister. That's quite interesting. The economy and job market are picking up quickly. If you're a job seeker looking to advance your career, or if you're an entrepreneur looking to start or expand your business, brightpathsearch.com has the resources to assist you. For job seekers at any stage, brightpathsearch.com can perfect your resume and cover letter, help you prepare for your interview and offer leads for networking. For entrepreneurs, brightpathsearch.com can help you get access to government contracts or even help you start your business. There's no need to go edit alone. For a free consultation for job seekers or small business services, email j at brightpathsearch.com or visit the website www.brightpathsearch.com. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.